Bojo, Caitlin Curtis and Dajnikas, but Awadmi and Dao. Thank you so much uh, for having me today. I'm really honored to be here with you to celebrate this Earth Day weekend. I want to begin just grounding us for a moment. I'm going to be sharing a little bit about embodiment today, and I just want to start with that, with embodiment. So get comfortable in your seat, and I invite you to take a deep breath in and out. One more deep breath in and out. I am often in my own way. Instead of experiencing the universe, I write about experiencing the universe. While at that very moment, the wind had holy secrets to tell me. I am often in my own way. Instead of experiencing the universe, I write about experiencing the universe. While at that very moment, the wind had holy secrets to tell me. Today I want to talk to you about a little boy named Bo and a little girl named Donnie. They are siblings and they are the main characters in my new children's books, Winter's Gifts and Summer's Magic, which are a part of the Indigenous Celebration of Nature series that I'm releasing over the next few years. Bo is short for Potawatomi and Dao, which is how we say I am Potawatomi, and Donnie is the Potawatomi word for a beloved daughter. Bo and Donnie aren't just characters in a book. They are my kids. They are me. They are all indigenous kids trying to hold on to their sacred cultures. They are all kids trying to care for Mother Earth. And they are the little kids inside of us, asking if we remember what it means to hold curiosity and care. Bo is an activist. He grows a garden in his backyard. He cleans up river debris with his friends. He is tender. He is kind. Donnie, his sister, is a contemplative. She navigates the world quietly. She sings to the trees in her yard. She helps her friends foster more genuine relationships with the creatures around them. Both of them are dreamers. And together they remind the people in their community why this relationship with Mother Earth, Sagamakwe, matters. And this is what I want to share with you today, this spirit of curious care. As we ask what it means for us to celebrate Earth Day in 2024, in a time when the world is so heavy, when Mother Earth herself is so heavy, when there is so much hate, and we are struggling daily to make sense of this on an individual and a communal level. The first Earth Day took place in Michigan by a group of college students in 1970 to draw attention to the ecological issues of their time. And we continue to celebrate Earth Day today. We continue to do the same, to point to the problems of our time. So what happens beyond Earth Day? What happens all the rest of the days of any given year, any given generation, and why should we care? This idea of curiosity, it takes root in us as children. I believe that. But as we get older, we are taught to trade curiosity for security. Often that security is baked into the status quo of our society of capitalism, which in reality is anything but secure for many of us. So instead of engaging with Mother Earth and the creatures around us with care, we are taught to commodify the land this is nothing new. We are aware of the reality that as we get older, we often go from this childlike tenderness to this time in our lives when we are told to grow up and become useful citizens. And for a lot of us, that comes with a cost. This is what our faith, our spiritual traditions teach us, that our questions and curiosities matter because they bring us closer to ourselves, to one another, to the sacred and to the world around us. And that love that we practice matters for future generations. So what happens for those of us who have lost our way? How do we find that curiosity again when we have become so sure of those answers, so sure that we have the better way, that we have the more powerful way, and that that is our only option? 
We return to curiosity. We return to the children. In our Potawatomi culture, we believe that children and elders hold us together. They are the closest to Mamogosnan, to creator in their lives. We remember that the love and care that we embody will last seven generations after we are gone and we hold that wisdom close. We know that we are living this present life, but that we are also ancestors in the making. We are preparing something. This is why indigenous boarding schools targeted children. They knew what it would mean for the young ones to lose their cultures. They knew the wisdom that the young ones held and they underestimated their courage. As colonialism continues to thrive across the world, bringing oppression to people and planet, the kids in our communities remind us to be courageous because Sagamakwe Mother Earth is courageous. I want to share a little story with you. One afternoon a few years ago, as I was um, getting ready to move, our family was moving from one house to another across town, and I was going through old containers of our belongings. The week before, my therapist asked me if I had any journals from when I was young, and I found them. Beginning in fourth grade, right after my parents divorced, I found journals with notes on every sin I believed I had committed, every shame that hung over my head. I told God I was sorry more than I reminded myself that I am loved and valuable and sacred. Growing up Southern Baptist, the church taught me to view my life as a series of boxes to be ticked off. Every day was a choice. Did you save someone's soul from hell or didn't you? Did you sin or didn't you? Were you pure or weren't you? And yet I hope something different for my children. I hope something for their future that begins with the sacredness of who they are, that begins with the sacredness of this earth and the many gifts that she pours over us day after day. Richard Rohr once wrote, we'll never solve the way to a new life in our heads. We have to live our way into a new kind of thinking. This is exactly what our children embody for us. This is exactly what Earth Day is about embodying this relationship. If my children can remember that the things that they experience, the people, the cultures around them, that they are sacred, maybe they won't grow up commodifying everything and everyone. Maybe they will learn what it means to live a constantly decolonizing existence, to value what is often forgotten around us, to love people and our creature kin simply because they were created to be loved. This is what I hope for my children. I hope for your children, for my neighbors next door, for people across the ocean I will never meet. If we can learn to believe not just that people are sacred, but that the earth is sacred, that she is our teacher, that the creatures around us are sacred, maybe our children will be able to pave the way for a better future for all of us. Maybe they will be the ones that fight climate change, who save our rainforests, who write in their journals, I know I am beloved. I know this earth is beloved. I know my neighbor is beloved. We live in an era in which the young people are leading us. They are leading us on issues of gun control. They are leading us on issues of climate change. They are leading protests and marches and making phone calls to their senators. They are changing systems that must be changed. Some of them are showing up to vote because they know they are the holders of the future. They know they have a chance to change things. And we should give them everything that they need to do it. I often grieve for these generations. They are hurting and they have so much to carry. So we carry that with them. We carry that in our relationship with each other, in our relationship with Mother Earth. All of our children belong to all of us. Because that's what kinship does. It's a reminder of that dust we came from and that dust we will return to. It's a reminder that while we are here, we make room for the next generation to spring up from the soil and create a new landscape. So our native children lead us, our black and brown children lead us, our daughters lead us, our queer and non-binary children lead us, our disabled children lead us, the ones that are forgotten lead us. The ones that are told to be quiet at the dinner table lead us, and if we are smart, we will let them lead. If we were smart, we will see that we all return to mystery, to Kachemanado, and we are simply to learn what we can along the way 
to embody humility and curiosity, to stand up to bullies, and to show them the way to love and peace. When we remember who we are and what the children inside of us teach us, we will remember how powerful our connection to Mother Earth, to Sugamakwe, really is. There is no true climate work without acknowledging our sacred relationship to the Earth. And this is the lesson that we learn from the kids in our lives. We must play. We must practice embodiment. We must find ways to connect to ourselves and to one another. There is no care for our children, for our homes, for our communities, without acknowledging the importance of curiosity in our relationship with Mother Earth. So I want to invite you into two things. In the coming weeks, the coming months, just put aside some time for these practices of embodiment. The first one is write a love letter to your child self. If you're an adult, write a love letter to your child self. If you're a child, write a story about Mother Earth. It can be a fantastical story. It can be a nonfiction story, write a story. And everyone is encouraged to do that. If you're a storyteller, write a story about Sagamakwe Mother Earth. Number two, write or draw or paint a love letter to Mother Earth. Or better yet, start a love letters to Mother Earth journal or sketchbook. The point here is to let your art and your creativity and your curiosity find its way into your relationship with Mother Earth. This is what embodiment does for us. It gets us out of our heads into our bodies, but then it kind of starts this cycle where we begin to think differently. We begin to show up differently in the world. And by using our bodies, our spirits, our minds to connect with Mother Earth, things will begin to shift. And this is sustainable change. It doesn't just last for one Earth Day, but it lasts every day throughout the years, throughout our lives, into the coming generations. So let your art find its way into this relationship. Because this is about relationship right now. It's about Earth Day in this moment, remembering who we are, remembering who she is, but we're also building a foundation for Earth Day. So every moment that comes from now on, we are asking big questions. What kind of relationship do we want with Sugamakwe? How can we heal this relationship? And in doing so, how can we heal ourselves? How can we pay attention for future generations? Are we brave enough to know our place in history in this moment, to own it, and to dream for a better future for all of us? We are all storytellers. We are all telling stories all the time. So what story do we want to write in this relationship with Mother Earth moving forward? We return to that childlike curiosity and it keeps us tethered to sacredness, to care. I want to close with a poem that I wrote um, on my substack last year. Uh, We write poetry all the time on my substack, The Liminality Journal, and this is a poem that I wrote. I really enjoyed writing, and I want to close with it because it's a poem about surprise and curiosity and laughter and shedding this skin of being a grown-up. It's about entering into that surprise, entering into that laughter and that care and curiosity, and I want to end with that because I want to send us out with that spirit, surprise curiosity, laughter, care. Enter into these things in any way that you can in the coming days, in the coming weeks. He walked in the door caked in mud. I couldn't see anything but his eyes looking down at his shoes caked in mud too. After a few moments of silence, his eyes met mine, nine-year-old meeting adult, childhood meeting sophistication. I wondered at the best response. I wondered what it means to be an adult in a world full of kids caked in mud. I stopped myself, took a breath, and remembered the child in me, what she'd do if she came home caked in mud and her eyes cast down at her own two feet. I ran to him, 
grabbed him, hugged him, laughed, let it all go. All the sophistication and the meetings, all the adulthood sliding off my own body as the mud caked and covered me too. I pulled his head back, my hands on his face. He cracked a smile, lines showing up around the corners of his eyes. Mud is a cleanser. Mud brings us home. Mud teaches us who we are and who we are not, just like the children do. Miigwech, thank you.